In this video, I'll show you how to generate speech from text using Python. We're going to be harnessing the power of Kokoi TTS coupled with Gradio to generate this beautiful UI in which you can paste any text that you'd like to generate an audio for, submit your request, and it's going to generate the audio for you on your own system. So this means you don't have to pay anybody to actually generate this speech, and you can click on the actual download button here to download the audio and use it in whatever place that you'd like. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually taking a look at the dependencies for this project. The only two dependencies that we're going to be using is the actual TTS package that's going to allow us to generate our speech from text. And for that, we're going to be using the Kokoi TTS package. As a side note, links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video, as well as a link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. And as always, smash the like button if you're enjoying this video thus far and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. So to install the Kokoi TTS package, we are going to to be coming down and there's going to be a specific section which is going to detail how to set up the TTS package and that's here under installation. You'll have to make sure that you have Python 3.9 or greater than that as well as Python 3.12 or less. For the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to be using Python 3.9. So to install the actual package, I'm going to copy this pip install TTS command. I am going to come back and then within the actual Python environment, which I want to run my script with, I am going to be pasting in pip install TTS and then pressing enter. I've already created a virtual environment before the beginning of this tutorial for this tutorial specifically, but if you'd like to have a tutorial on how to set up a Python virtual environment so that you can separate your different projects and their dependencies, then leave a comment down below letting me know and I'll definitely create a video on that. But I'll just let the pip install install command finish and then I will resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So now that the package is installed to test if it's actually set up properly, what you can do is make sure one that you're going to be writing this command within the Python environment that you've installed the package in and that if you're using a virtual environment that you've activated it and then you can do TTS space dash dash list underscore models and then press enter and this is going to go ahead and list all of the available models to you which you can use to actually generate your audio from the text that you're going to be providing. So this is going to take a little bit of time and the reason for that is because it needs to actually pull all of this information from a repo that's on the internet. So just give it some time, it's going to print out a list to you and these are going to be all of the models that are available to you to actually generate speech using your text. Welcome back everybody. So as you can see that the actual command line process completed and we got a whole bunch of different models printed to us which we can use to actually generate our speech. One thing that I'd like to mention here, and I'm going to increase the size of the actual terminal window, and that is that these models are going to be for different use cases. For example, if you'd like to generate speech using a multilingual model, then that is going to be called multilingual within the model's name. And this basically means that the model is capable of generating speech within various different languages. But if you want a fine-tuned model, the benefit of that being that it's going to be much smaller and it's going to be lighter on the disk as well as on resources, then you can actually take a look at the models that are specific to the language that you want to generate speech for. So since we're going to be generating speech from text that's in English, I'm going to be using these English models that we have here. But if you'd like to use other models to generate speech, then you can go through a list of all of these models and use the appropriate one for your need. But the actual process of the code and everything else is going to remain the same. And I'll show you where you're going to be putting in the model name. So now that this is done and that we've concluded that the actual TTS package from Cocoa has been installed properly, the next thing that we're going to be doing is installing Gradio. And Gradio is this awesome package that is going to allow us to basically generate the web GUI, which is going to allow us to then interact with our code using a web-based GUI. So to do that, all you're going to be doing is again coming back and making sure that you do pip install radio. It's going to install the radio package for you. And then that's pretty much it. So while this is going on, we can actually proceed with the next part, which is to start coding our actual script. So to do that, we're going to be doing the following. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is importing torch. And if you've installed the TTS package, then this should already be included. After this, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is saying that from TTS.API, I am going to import TTS. And then finally, I'm going to say that I'm going to import the Gradio package as, and then I am going to do GR. Once this is done, the next thing that we're going to be doing is determining if CUDA is available on the device. So if you're using an actual graphics card on your system that supports the CUDA acceleration framework, then this is going to allow you to enable that and then the actual inference is going to be much faster. So to do that, you can do device is equals to, and then we're going to do CUDA, and then I'm going to do if, and then we can do torch dot, and here I'm going to do CUDA, dot is underscore available. 
like so. So if CUDA is available, then the device is CUDA. Otherwise, we're going to resort to using our CPU. So this means that the script is going to work on all different systems. If the system has a CUDA acceleration capabilities, then we're going to be using that. Otherwise, we'll just resort to using the CPU. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is actually creating the function, which is going to be responsible for generating our audio. So to do that, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say definition and then generate underscore audio. And then I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say that it's going to take in two parameters. The first is going to be text. And if the text is not provided to us, then I'm just going to be using the text that is specified here. So this is going to be the default value of text if when we invoke the function, we don't send in our own specific text. So that's the only actual parameter we need. We don't need a second one. So once this is done, I'm going to initialize the actual TTS object. So to do that, I'm going to do TTS is equal to TTS. And then here we can specify our model name. And this is going to be the place where you can actually specify whatever model that you'd like to use from the list that I'd shown you previously. So my testing concluded that the following model, which is for English, and it's fast paced LJ speech works very nice and it has a good voice that doesn't sound too robotic. So I'm going to be using that. And then once we've done this, we are going to do dot two and then actually do device. So this is going to load up the model, set it up, download the model for us if the need be. And then once this is done, we can move on to the next part. So the next step is going to be now, once we've actually initialized our TTS object is to actually run the actual inference and then save the actual output for that in a file. So to do that, I'm going to do TTS dot and then TTS underscore two underscore file. And this is just a helper method that allows us to one, run the inference and then to take the output from that and save that into a file. And then here we're going to give it two things. The first is going to be the actual text, which is the text that gets passed in. And then after that, the actual file path to where we'd like to save our actual audio file. So here, what I'm going to be doing is creating a folder called outputs. And then I'm going to say that within the output folder, I'm going to be saving a file that's going to be called output.dev. And that's pretty much all we have to do. And then final thing that I'm going to be doing is that from this actual function, I'll return the actual path to the audio file. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So now with this done, we can actually test our script and see if it works. So I can do print. And then within that, I can do generate underscore audio. And then once this is done for the text here, let's don't send anything. Let's just default to using the actual default text that we have and let's actually test our code. So to test our code, all you'll have to do is just run the actual script. So we can do that by doing Python main.py, press enter. And this is going to take some time. And the reason for that is because depending upon the actual speed or the processing capabilities of your system, as well as the actual bandwidth of your internet, it's going to take time to actually download the model and then run it. Oh, and I can see that the is available is actually spelled wrong. So let me fix that and now it should be good. And we can run the script once more. And hopefully this time it should work as intended. And then I will resume the video once the actual process has completed. Welcome back everybody. So as you can see, the actual process has now completed. And for the text that's as follows, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It just took 0.4 seconds. So now I can come to my outputs and I can see that the output.vav file is here. I can play it and it sounds amazing. So there we have it. Now we have the actual text file or audio file being generated. So now how can I create the actual GUI to interact with this actual function and then interactively using a GUI generate my speech? So to do that, we're going to be doing the following. I'm going to create a variable called the demo and then set it equal to GR, which is Gradio and then interface. So we're going to be creating an interface using Gradio. Once this is done, we are going to be specifying what the actual function is going to be that this interface is going to bind to. In this case, that's going to be generate audio. And remember that the generate audio function takes in only one argument. And this is going to be important later on. Then we're going to define what are our inputs going to be. So in this case, our input is just going to be one input, which is going to be the text that we require in order to generate the speech for. So what I'm going to be doing is doing the following, which is gr.text. And then we can give our actual field a label here, which is label it equals to, and then text like so. So now that this is done, let me do command save. And then the last thing that I'm going to be doing after this is saying what our outputs are going to be. And the outputs in this case, again, is going to be just one single output, which is going to be an audio output. And what I'm going to be doing here is then gr.audio. And then what I'm going to be doing here is giving it a label. 
and then setting that equal to audio like so. And that's pretty much it. That's all we have to do. So now Gradio is going to handle everything for us. It's going to bind this interface to this function. It's going to handle taking input from us, passing these inputs to the actual function and then taking the output from this function and then displaying that within an actual audio GUI element that we can interact with. So now that this is done, I've just reformatted the code. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is doing demo.launch and that's all we have to do. So now if we run our script, what's going to happen is that it's going to spin up an actual instance of radio for the interface that we've created. It's going to spit out a URL within our actual debug console, as you can see. And then when we navigate to this URL, it's going to display to us the interface that we had created. And now I can specify any text here. So I'm going to say subscribe to my channel and like the video. And if I now do submit, there we go, it started the processing and there we go, the audio has been generated. So now I can play it and what I'm going to be doing is the following. Subscribe to my channel, like the video. And there you go, as you can see, the actual process completed successfully. So that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. I hope that you learned a thing or two about how to generate speech from text using Python and the Cocoa TTS package. If you would like a more detailed video on the actual Gradio package, then leave a comment down below letting me know and I'll try my best to do that for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.